Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. Happy New Year. And it's time for a, another review of an older album today. Dead Kennedys, Plastic Surgery Disasters. Dead Kennedys is a California hardcore punk band who at the time of the release of this album in the early 80s, their roster consisted of uh, Jello Biafra on vocals, D.H. Pellegro on drums, Klaus Floyd on bass, and East Bay Ray on guitar. And in my opinion, this was one of the best quartets in hardcore punk during their time. I mean, tight, talented, unique, and very creative. This LP is Dead Kennedy's sophomore full length. For the most part, I've seen more, I guess, sort of accolades given to their debut album. People really prefer that LP over this one. But uh, in my opinion, this album is actually nothing but improvement past the debut LP. Maybe it didn't really have the strong, viral, and kind of punk music defining singles like California Uber Alice or Holiday in Cambodia, but still, I think this is some of Dead Kennedy's best material, if not their best material, period. For one, the production on this thing is absolutely fantastic. The guitars on this LP are just brittle, eardrum-shattering fire. Just the way they kind of fuse in with the bass in this recording sounds great. Plus, on top of just East Bay Ray's guitar tone, he plays a lot of intensely catchy and melodic leads and solos all over this album. I mean, this dude is a fantastic guitarist, and some strong elements of surf rock and, and rockabilly show up too, especially when he's throwing on a little bit of a vintage reverb onto whatever he's playing. While Dead Kennedys was a, a punk band, there were clearly other influences coming from genres such as jazz and blues, especially from Klaus Floride's bass lines. At this point in Dead Kennedys' career, Klaus was an extremely refreshing punk bassist. I mean, some of the stuff that he did with the pick, I mean, his pick etiquette, for one, was fantastic. And sometimes, like, on tracks such as Riot, he just sort of pulls something crazy, like just be strumming these chords on the bass. He played the bass with a lot of speed a lot of aggression, it was rough, but also very tight and focused. There was a lot of treble on his bass tone too, which had a nice grinding quality to it. Now as far as the drums go, it is fast, fast, <laughs> fast, very muscular playing from DH. He just brought so much momentum and so much thrust to this record. I mean, his snare rolls on the track Buzz Bomb opening up the song are fantastic. And the way he would just bust into a song, like when the main riff kicks into the song Forest Fire, just the flurry of cymbals that come in and snare drums and kicks all at once, it's just so overwhelming how much sound hits you at once when he just sort of brings the drums into play. And Jello, um, um, the band's frontman, really one of the most unique frontmen in punk rock. Not only because of his personality, but his singing style, his lyrical content. While a lot of people do associate punk music in general with political ideology, political revolution, very few punk vocalists had the detail and, and the level of satire that Jello did in his lyrics. And as far as his singing goes, uh, well yeah, like any punk vocalist, Jello could and did show aggression, he would scream occasionally, but typically he sang pretty cleanly. But when he did sing, it was in this insanely weird vibrato. Uh, and not only did that really set him apart from many other punk vocalists, but the extreme amount of emotion and intensity he would put into his vocals. Not just, you know, I'm angry, I'm angry at something, I'm pissed. He would really act out a role in these songs, like the extreme paranoia and urgency coming through on the track Well Paid Scientist, or the, I guess, sort of self-centered and very cocky persona he puts forth on Buzz Bomb, or the young, dumb, and shallow effigy he kind of puts together on the track Terminal Preppy. And what he would say when he was kind of in these roles was, was really some of the most cutting-edge social commentary of the 80s. I mean, really to the point where a lot of it is 
is kind of relevant today to an extent. Dead Kennedy's debut album to me had a lot of kind of wacky, zany, silly, violent shenanigans going on left and right. This album seems a little bit more focused on kind of making a point. point, point. On Government Flu, the story of a government literally kind of testing chemicals and drugs on the people through the water and other various means, either poisoning them or <laughs> experimenting on them. Terminal Preppy kind of makes fun of young, dumb college kids going to university just to get a business degree and get drunk and get laid and, and really just kind of jerk off. Trust Your Mechanic kind of paints this evil picture of the drug industry where people have to basically take drugs to survive because of an illness or an ailment, but it ends up screwing something else up and you have to take five or six or seven other drugs. Moon Over Marin talks about pollution. Riot is this really just disturbing story about the kind of mentality that goes into a crowd of people destroying everything and kind of has this very funny mantra lyric saying that, hey, tomorrow you're homeless, but tonight it's a blast. And Halloween, that makes fun of the fact that we have this one national holiday dedicated to dressing pretty much however you would like for an entire day, whereas we really have to conform to what society thinks we should dress like on a regular basis for the rest of the year. With great guitar playing, great bass lines, drums, and thought-provoking, captivating, and sometimes even hilarious vocals, Dead Kennedys at this time in their career were a tight, well-oiled punk machine, churning out one fantastic song after another. And whether it was a short song that was under two minutes or a track that came out around five, these guys would put a ton of detail into these songs, whether it be through their playing or through song structuring. Nearly every track kind of has a very unique characteristic to it, whether it be a musical one or a subject sort of lyrical topic oriented one like the saxophones on Terminal Preppy make that track even zanier and kookier. Winnebago Warrior has all these funny female background vocals and Jello going yeehaw as he's making fun of these people that sort of get Winnebago's and then go out for the weekend into the wilderness and kind of rough it. It sounds like I'm listening to some sort of punked out version of a spaghetti western soundtrack. The, 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 the dancey groove on Halloween is fantastic. The really intense and just dark, sour instrumentation on the song Riot perfectly, I mean, musically accompanies the story that Jello is telling, especially as he gets to the part where there's a line of cops up against all these people who are rioting. The extremely hilarious forest fire with how that song starts off about eating berries and then getting high and wanting to turn into an arsonist, really the silliest and most senselessly violent track on the entire album, but still sort of turns into a very dark, satirical picture of these extremely rich people who are very materialistic trying to save their things as their houses are burning. I really could go on and on and on about what every single song sort of brings to the table. On the whole, Plastic Surgery Disasters is one of the most unique, creative, and colorful punk albums of the 80s. There are very few punk albums from this period that I prefer more than this. Dead Kennedys always have been one of my favorite bands in hardcore punk, and they continue to be, and with <laughs> albums like this in their canon, I don't see that changing anytime soon. Playing, production, lyrics, songwriting, it's it's really all here for me on this album. Uh, if you've given this thing a listen, what did you think of it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Why? Is it one of your favorite punk albums? If so, why not? What punk albums do you prefer more? And, and that's it. And if you haven't given it a listen, do try it out because even people who I think aren't necessarily into punk can definitely see the musicality that these guys bring to the table, see the satire. It has that punk speed, it has that punk volume, but I would say this album is much more animated than it is just angry. All right, thank you for watching. Anthony Fantano, Dead Kennedys, forever.